हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम आवाज आ रही है आगे चलो इसको पूरे साइड पे करो जल्दी करो हेलो आवाज आ रही है आप लोगों यस ठीक है जस्ट सेकंड अच्छा चलो ठीक है ये फिर मैंने क्लास लेनी थी इसके अंदर सिर्फ ये कार्बन थर्टीन एन एम आर एच एन एम आर इसके क्वेश्चन लेटेस्ट वाले ठीक है जस्ट अ सेकेंड अच्छा चले ठीक है ये स्टार्ट करते हैं कार्बन थर्टीन और एच एन एम आई सब उसके लेटेस्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी के क्वेश्चन है ठीक है उन्हीं दो स्टार्टिंग स्टार्टिंग विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ठीक है स्टार्टिंग विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन प्रोटोन एनमा स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ ये लाइडो की कोई चीज है एंड इट्स अच्छा इट्स टेबल कंटेन्स द केमिकल शिफ्ट वैल्यूज फॉर द प्रोटोन्स इन डिफरेंट एनवायरमेंट एंड दे वु प्रॉब्लम बी आस्किंग यू टू आइडेंटिफाई ईच वन ऑफ द एनवायरमेंट ठीक है ऑल ऑफ दम डेल्टा टू पॉइंट सिक्स 1.1 ठीक है आइडेंटिफाई द प्रोटॉन्स एक्सेट्रा प्रिंट द नंबर ऑफ पीक्स एंड सो ऑन सो फर्स्ट थिंग बाय लुकिंग एट दिस मॉलिक्यूल एनएम आर स्पेक्ट्रम इज गिवन वी गोना ट्राई एंड मैच द द एनएम आर स्पेक्ट्रम ठीक है इस तरह का क्वेश्चन वी हैड डन अर्लियर सो आई विल जस्ट क्विकली डू दिस वन सो दिस वन हैज अ C2H5 ट्वाइस सो दैट बेसिकली मींस कि लेट मी रब दिस ऑफ अ दैट आई सेड this thing basically means it's uh, two ethyl groups that are attached to it so there's a ch2 and there's a ch3 and this one has two ethyl groups ch2 and you have a ch3 uh what's going to happen is ke uh, protons in the same environment let me draw all the protons this one will have two h's uh this carbon over here has uh, 3 h's as a similarly this carbon over here has a uh, 3 h atoms and there are 4 h atoms uh, on the benzene ठीक है एंड रिमेंबर के इफ द एच हैज अ डिफरेंट केमिकल बॉन्डिंग और अ डिफरेंट एनवायरनमेंट इट विल रेजोनेट एट अ डिफरेंट फ्रीक्वेंसी सो स्टार्टिंग विद द सीएस इज एट द एंड ओवर हियर अस ये दोनों सीएस टी ना दीस टू दे आर एग्जैक्टली इन द सेम एनवायरनमेंट एंड दे वुड रेजोनेट एट द सेम फ्रीक्वेंसी अच्छा व्हाट इज इट गोइंग टू बी इज इट गोइंग टू बी अ Doublet or a triplet or uh, what would it? What would this be? Triplet. 
ठीक है ट्रिपलेट एन प्लस वन रूल इज इफ द नेबरिंग कार्बन आइटम हैज टू एच एस इट्स गोइंग टू बी एन प्लस वन दैट्स गोइंग टू बी अ इट्स गोइंग टू बी अ ट्रिपलेट ठीक है सो दीज टू सी एस सीज दे गोइंग टू बी ट्रिपलेट पीक्स सो वी गॉट जस्ट वन ट्रिपलेट पीक सो दैट मीन्स ये वाला जो है दिस वन दिस वन इज प्रॉब्लि अच्छा दिस वन इज प्रॉब्लि दिस वन एट द एंड because there's there's only one triplet peak as of the next one okay you've got you've got ch2s and they are both ch2s are in the exact same chemical environment so they will be resonating together what is it going to be is it going to be a triplet or a quadruplet or multiplet ne how many neighboring carbon atoms how many how many h's on the neighboring carbon atom three तो फोर में स्प्लिट होगी ना एन प्लस वन ओके अच्छा दिस वन इज क्वाड्रुपलेट इज गोइंग टू बी अ क्वाड्रुपलेट अम सो दिस वन इज गोइंग टू बी अ क्वाड्रुपलेट एंड देयर इज देयर इज जस्ट वन क्वाड्रुपलेट पीक व्हिच इज एट अच्छा वो दैट वन इज एट इज एट 2.6 दिस वन सेकंड अच्छा दैट वन इज एट 2.6 तो ये वाला जो है ना दिस वन ओवर है दिस क्वाड्रुपलेट इज प्रॉब्ली द वन दैट्स एट अच्छा दैट्स एट 2. पॉइंट टू पॉइंट सिक्स अच्छा देन यू हैव अ सी एच टू ओवर है दिस वन इन द मिडल ये क्या होगा इज इट गोइंग टू बी व्हाट वुड बी द स्प्लिटिंग पैटर्न ऑफ ऑफ द सी एच टू दैट्स ओवर है सिंगलेट ठीक है दैट दैट वन इज गोइंग टू बी अ सिंगलेट uh because it has no neighboring hydrogen atoms see okay? that's going to be a singlet so we've got we've got two singlets three singlets actually theek okay? hai so we have to identify each one of them so we'll we'll talk about the singlet later because we've got three singlets so it's harder to actually identify which one is this one then you've got an nh over here the nh is always a singlet ठीक है, so we've got an NH over here, and that's that's always a singlet. NH and OH peaks are always always going to be singlet. So we've got another singlet. ठीक है, we've got three singlets showing up over here. So that's your NH singlet. Uh, then you've got two methyl groups. Uh, this hydrogen atoms are exactly in the same environment. So if they are in the same environment, they would be. I mean, these ones would be resonating together. so that will be a singlet as well because the neighboring carbon atom has i mean this carbon atom has no h's so that means this one will be a a singlet as well but it's going to be a big singlet because there are eight six protons that are resonating in this environment so this one is probably going to be this 2.3 the big singlet over here theek hai that's probably going to be this 2.3 the big one And then you have got the benzene protons. The benzene protons, uh, I mean these hydrogen protons over here. As so the benzene protons will be resonating together, uh, but benzene is normally a multiplet. Okay, because the protons are not exactly in the same environment, so the so there's a there's going to be significant peak splitting that would be happening. So you've got all these peaks. Uh, we've identified a few of them. Okay, the rest of them will be identified using the table. So let's quickly do that. Uh, firstly, the benzene protons. Uh, the benzene resonates at aromatic. Can't be a hydrogen proton attached to an aromatic ring. That's six to nine. So, so this one is probably going to be the benzene protons. and so so this one is is this uh we've got one at 8.9 so what is a small peak a singlet at 8.9 so which one is that uh so that is probably an amide uh, because we had an amide we had a h that was attached to n 5 to 12 so in a much higher range it's it's going to be this amide singlet because that was a singlet as well so this one at 8.9 or 9 
with the 8.9. So the one at 8.9, that's probably going to be this one. Now, which one is left? The only one that's left is this uh, one at three, which is going to be this singlet. Okay, that's the only one that's left. So you clear, okay, we've identified all the peaks. So can we say that the height of a peak is determined by the number of uh, hydrogen atoms present in it? I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that is what the height tells you. TK, I mean, remember the graph uh, tells you uh, three things. It tells you the number one, it tells you the number of environments that the protons are in. For example, in this case, uh, you've got one, two, three, four, five, and six environments. The second thing it tells you is, uh, is the height. The height tells you the number of protons, number of H protons in a particular environment. Now in this question, they didn't actually tell you the height. So in this question, they didn't, they didn't really give you the height, but you can guess the height that it's a big height. So that means a lot of absorption is happening. So this singlet over here must be the, the methyl, two methyls over here. And the third thing is, the third information that you get is a splitting pattern. And there's actually a fourth information as well. And that's, uh, that's the chemical shift value. Now, to solve this question, we barely looked at the table. TK. We were able to do that without looking at the table. I say anyway, so starting with the, this one, he says name the splitting pattern at 2.6 and 1.1. So you just have to name it uh, 2.6 and 2.6 is a quadruplet and 1.1 is a, this one over here is a, is a triplet. TK, so So quadruplet, and we've got a, and simultaneously we've got a triplet. And the relative peak area of the peaks at three and 2.3 is one ratio three respectively. Identify the protons in the NMR spectrum of lidocaine that are responsible for the peaks of the falling chemical shift value, 7.1. So you're gonna mention 7.1 is this, uh, are these benzene protons. So, so identify those that it's your, I mean, you can just look at the table and so 7.1 are your, are your benzene protons. The one at three, what's, what's at three? Uh, three was, I mean, this three was this CH2, which was next to N and CO. So, uh, or between the two. So that was next to CH2, C double bond O. And on the other side, you had N with two alkyl chains. Okay, so you don't have to draw the whole thing. And then you had to quote, uh, so these are your protons at three and then 2.3. What was 2.3? 2.3 is was were your two methyl groups that were, hey, what was 2.3? Yeah, it, it's your, it's your two methyl groups that were next to benzene. So 2.3 2 was the environment was a methyl that was next to, that was next to benzene. So do we have to draw this or like or just writing a molecular formula? Uh, you can, um, let's come, I can, I can open and show you. You can just tell them that this is the environment, that's it. I mean, you can write six, C6H5 over here or C6H6 over here. TK, is this clear? I said, next part. Let me just show you. This is uh, 42, March 22, 42, just one second. So it was March 22, I'll just show you how the answers are going to be written. The concept question that this is question number. 
six. So they just they just said alkyl next to aromatic ring. Uh, the other one was CH two next to serial bond. Oh, we wrote a bit more, and this was uh, attached to benzene. So we drew the aromatic ring. That's the only difference. Okay. So we were correct. He just wrote aromatic ring over here. Is that clear? As the next one, uh, predict the number of peaks of the carbon thirteen NMR for this one. So the same molecule. Now we have to deal with carbon thirteen NMR. So how many how many carbon environments do we have? Okay, I'm just going to mark them with the uh, East Cooperi marker. So this carbon over here is is a unique carbon. Okay, it's got a different environment compared to all the others. Uh, because no one else is bonded similar to this. These two carbons are exactly the same. So let me mark the other two. So this carbon and this carbon over here are exactly the same. Then this carbon and this carbon are exactly the same as well. Then the carbon over here, the CST and CST, they are exactly identical. So they would resonate uh, together. So this carbon and this carbon are exactly in the same environment. Do so you have this carbon over here, um, which is uh, different compared to all the others? Then you have the CS two carbon that's also unique. Uh, then these two are exactly the same. Uh, the two CH twos they're exactly the same, so they would be uh, resonating together. So this one. And this one are exactly the same. And finally, you've got the last one, which is uh, last value pink. I said so these two are exactly identical. So how many how many different environments do we have? We've got uh, eight. Here you missed one. What's a miss here? There is also in the end. Yeah, well, okay. So there's there's this one as well. That's that's unique as well. So you got one. This is your second frequency. This is your third. That's your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. So nine. TK, you've got nine different carbon thirteen peaks. Is that clear? Yes, sir. This counts in nine. As the next one, you've got this question which says that there's this molecule and predict the number of peaks seen in the carbon thirteen NMR and proton NMR spectrum as well. So. Let's start with proton environment. So, how many protons in do we have? We've got this NH two proton. That's I mean they would be resonating differently. Uh, we've got this NH two, which is different from that NH two. So that's a second environment. Uh, then we've got your um, OH, well CH two TK, and then you've got your OH TK four environments, right? Is there another H with the C? Uh, equal HP. Okay, there's one more H, and that's uh, okay, there's a fifth H. So all these H's ha have different environments, and uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so H in a market, okay, that's five. Now focus on the carbon environments. How many carbons? That's uh, this one is one. Four. So uh, that's your. Four. Uh, four. I mean, the four carbons, all four are, are unique. TK. So uh, there's this one. And then there's this one. All four are, are different. So you've got four chemical environments for carbon 13 and MRTK. Clear? G. As a next question, uh, functional, functional groups present in. Uh, Procaine, which is uh, amine, TK, that's uh, so that's one amine. Or okay. uh, what is this? This this is in amide. Ester. 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 Oh, oh, NH2 wala. Nee, it's Phenyl. this one okay. phenylamine. Mm -hmm. That's a normal alkyl. Well, to be specific, that's an alkyl amine with carbon chains. Okay. And that's your ester. As anyways, next one. Um, how many? 
uh, sp hybridized carbon atoms do we have zero zero okay, okay for sp hybridized carbon atom the carbon atom must be making uh, two double bonds right uh, which no one is carbon dioxide means sp hybridized you don't have a carbon dioxide over here so that this one is zero sp2 hybridized benzene mein, what type of carbon do we have sp2 okay, all of them are sp2 so uh, uh, there are six sp2 hybridized carbon atom so then there's one more over here that's uh, whenever a carbon makes a double bond that's Sir? sp2 uh, um nh2 ki ye nh2 replace hua h ki jagah right consensus to you the whole nh2 okay okay acha so, pere ke uh, how many sp3 hybridized carbon atoms so any carbon that's making four bonds uh, tetrahedral that's sp3 hybridized so this is one this is two this is 3 4 5 and you double one that's 5 6 so 4 plus 2 6 Six, right? Yes. All of these are sp3 hybridized carbon atoms. The proton NMR spectrum of propane dissolved in D2O is recorded. What peaks disappear in D2O? NH and OH. Okay. NH and uh, OH peaks. But remember, not amide. Okay, amide does not ionize. It's not a base. So only NH and OH, the normal amines and the normal OH alcohol carboxylic acids, they are the ones uh, which ionize, and therefore they lose their H H plus one ions. So they disappear. So that means uh, predict the number of peaks of H and MR. So this will not show up. Okay, this one over here will not show up. NH two. Okay. Uh, Uh, that's uh, that's the only one that's that's not going to show up. So how many peaks? How many environments? Uh, so this is going to be one, the benzene hydrons. Uh, so that's one environment. Then you've got uh, uh, CH two protons. That's your second one. Then you've got these other CH two protons. That's your third one. And then you have the CH two in the in the bracket. That's your fourth. And then you have your CST in the bracket. That's your fifth one. There are actually two CSTs. There's the two carbon chains, but both CSTs will resonate together. So that would actually be one environment. So in total, you'll have five different proton environments. Okay, the CS2, the CS2, both CS2s in this, in both branches, they have the same environment, so they'll resonate together. That's your fourth frequency. Both CSTs will resonate together as well. That's your fifth resonant frequency. We missed the new. Is this is this all? You clear that there are five peaks. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So I'll go apart. Uh, what's the use of TMS? To take a reference. It is used as. A reference. You can remember TMS is tetramethyl silane. Um, there's always whenever you see an NMR spectrum, can't be NMR spectrum. Whenever you see an NMR spectrum at zero, there's a TMS peak always. The rest of the protons resonating, they're always compared with the protons that are part of the TMS peak. Okay, and you should have some idea about what the, what is the structure of TMS. TMS is a molecule that's a uh, Tetramethyl silane uh, SI with three CSTs, four CSTs. Tetramethyl. They actually all have the same environment, so they will be resonating together. So you usually get a very strong peak for TMS. So what's the purpose of uh, D two O? It doesn't show its absorbance. Ah, uh, it's go. I mean. Which absorb? Which uh, which peaks disappear when you have D two D two O? Okay. NH. 
So it basically helps you identify It helps to identify uh, NH2 and OH protons. Okay, because they're going to disappear when you have uh, when you have D2O. That's the next one. There are three isomeric ketones with the molecular formula C5H10O. There's pentane pentin on there's pentin three on there's three methyl butanone. And you have to tell them uh, what are the number of peaks. First one, pentin two on. Pent is five carbon atoms. So there's a double bond on the pentin two one. So there's a double bond on the second one. TK you got sir. Double bond on the second one. And then you have your CH3. This is your CH2. And that's a CS3. So how many are all the protons in different environments? Three. Four. Three here. But it is, so you got you got this CS3, that's a different environment. You got uh so you got this CH2, that's a that's a different environment. Uh you've got this CH2, which is different. The hydrogens are different. But okay, finally, you've got the last one, which is that CST is different from the from all the others. So there's four environments, TK for the first one. Splitting patterns, what is what would this be? Singlet. Singlet, TK. This one would be a triplet. What would this be? Multiplet. Multiplet, or if this one would be a triplet as well. Uh, so as a carbon enema, so all I think all five carbons are are in a different environment. So that's that's five peaks, right? Is that clear? Or the next one, pentin three one. So pentin three one is this thing. So pentin three one me it's uh, uh it's the ends are the same. Two. Okay, so this CS three and this CS three are exactly they're exactly the same. Uh, the CS twos are exactly the same as well. So this CS two and this CS two are exactly the same. So so the proton environments would be two. Okay, was here. How many carbon environments do you have? You've got three carbon environments because the end carbons are the same, so they'll resonate together. The green carbons are also the same. Then there's this metal carbon as well, so that's the third one. As I say, you've got three methyl butanone. So butanone is uh, of a third pen, there's a methyl. G and a three methyl butanone. Two H peaks, H plus. Ni A K sorry, yahan pe bhi hoga C H. Asa yahan pe kya hoga ke the two C H T's over here they they're exactly the same, right? So and then you take it three C H three is the answer. Uh, is this H? And then you've got your CSC at the other end. Okay, so the three different environments for protons. Carbon ki kithi environment. So that's uh, how many carbon environments do you have? These five. If I need these two are exactly the same. Oh four. yeah, four. So there's second, third, and fourth. Okay, so there are four. So there are four environments for for carbon. As a state, all the ketones are uh, just, just, yes. So could you draw like this for our equations? Uh, Alkylamine. Do you do what? 
So like, could you draw like this for uh, the above question that we did? Which one? So that alkyl amine in that question, previous question. This one? Ah, uh, yes, uh, for this part, alkyl amine only. I mean, this part over here? Yes. Uh, so that was basically this thing. It was N with, uh, I mean, this was the rest of the molecule. You had CH2, CH3, two ethyl groups, right? So that meant, meant basically the two CH3s were resonating together. So that was one environment. The CH2s were together as well. That was another environment. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Some next part is okay, um, state all the ketones of the molecule formula C5H10, H10O that have a doublet in the proton and mass spectrum. State all the ketones. Yeah, okay, what do I state? The number of ketones or? So the C isomeric ketones. So I said, so he's talking about these ones. So which one of them have a doublet? Does this molecule have a doublet? It's a. Uh, it doesn't have a doublet, right? I mean, there's going to be a singlet. This one would be, the neighboring has two H's, so that, that's going to be a triplet. This one has, the neighboring has five H's, so that's a multiplet. This one is going to be a triplet as well, so there's no doublet. Uh, is there a doublet? I mean, this one would be a quadruplet. This one would be a triplet. Where do you think, in all these three molecules, where is the doublet? Is it in the middle one? Just C double bond over? Consola. Neither to H in here now. Oh. Um, okay. Doublet is going to be these CHTs over here. The neighboring carbon atom has one H. For a doublet, you need the neighboring carbon atom to have one H. So it's this thing over here is going to be a doublet. Okay, this CST, the neighboring carbon atom has one H. This CST, the neighboring carbon atom has one H. So both of them will be resonating together. And both of them are going to be doublets. So yeah, clear? Yes. What's the name that this was three methyl butanone? I said, which one have a singlet in the proton and spectrum? So uh, this one definitely has a singlet. This CST in the neighboring carbon atom has no H. So it's it's again going to be the same answer. It's a 3 methyl butanone. That's a that one is a singlet, right? Is that clear? Or the Picha there's no singlet. That one has a singlet as well. This one. Neighboring carbon atom has no H. So which molecule was this? Pentin 2 on. So, like the same, three methyl butanone or pentin two on. Sir, why not the middle one? Uh, yeah, wala? Yeah. Need this CH two. The neighboring has three H's, so that's going to be a quadruplet. This CH three, the neighboring has two H's, so that's going to be a a triplet. For a singlet, you need. Uh, for a singlet, you don't need anything on the neighboring carbon atom. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Let's have the next one. In key peaks, Pasani, you have to tell them uh, how many carbon thirteen, carbon thirteen. So how many carbon environments do you have? The first one. The the first one is three carbon atoms, and then there's a double bond O. And O, and then there's a carbon atom. TK3H is one, two, one, two, one, two, three. I said, so how many carbon environments? I think there would be five. All five are, are different, right? So, this case, there would be five peaks. Is that clear? All five are different. Second one. Uh, you got carbon, carbon, then carbon with the CO2 ester link, then you've got two carbons. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, two H's, and this one will have three H's. How many carbon environments does this have? Five. T 
ठीक है फाइव है क्योंकि ऑल ऑफ देम आर यूनिक दिस सी एस टी इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दिस सी एस टी बिकॉज इट्स अनसिमेट्रिकल दिस सी एस टी इज फर्दर वे फ्रॉम सीरियल बॉन्डो दिस सी एस टी इज क्लोजर टू अरियल बॉन्डो सो दैट मीन्स ऑल फाइव आर डिफरेंट सो दैट्स दैट विल हैव फाइव पीक्स एज वेल थर्ड वन सीएस थ्री देन यू हैव दी एस्टर सीरियल बॉन्डो एन ओ then you have three carbon ch2 ch2 acha again isko dekh lo to all all five have a different environment so that's going to be five peaks theek hai this ch3 is different from this ch3 this c is different ch2 is both of them are different theek hai this one is bonded to ch3 this one is closer to an oxen so all of them are different so five peaks uh iski kitni honge CH beach pe and on one side it's got two methyl groups. For so you've got an ester, acetyl bond O and O, and then you've got another CS three. Kitni mm-hmm. environments? Is ki four? Because the two CS three are identical; they're exactly the same. So that's one. That's your second one. That's your third. That's your fourth. तो इसकी फोर पीक्स है और फिर आपके पास लास्ट वाला है सी देन यू हैव अ सी एच एंड देन यू गॉट टू सी एस टीज अगेन सी एच एज सी एच एज एंड दिस वन हैड वन एच इसकी भी फोर होंगी क्योंकि द टू सी एस आर टुगेदर रेजनेटिंग टुगेदर दैट्स वन सेकेंड थर्ड एंड Fourth, as a four peaks. So, you clear, Sara? Yes. Or last question, part C is that he's talking about the H and M spectrum of uh, of this one. I think this one is the which one is this one? This is the first one, right? The first one over here. So, H and M are splitting pattern. Be clear, or who be clear? So, first thing, how many H proton environment do you have in the first one? Uh, for the first one, it's uh, I mean these protons will be unique. Then you have uh, uh, four only. These protons, this CSC protons will be unique, and then you have the two in the middle, and they would be different as well. These hydrogen protons will be different, and these hydrogen protons will be different as well. So number of peaks that's four. In the splitting pattern, now what's the splitting pattern? What what would this be? Single singlet. तो एक तो होगी सिंगलेट ये क्या होगा ट्रिपलेट ट्रिपलेट और फिर उसके साथ वाला दिस वन मल्टीप्लेट मल्टी ठीक है दैट वन इज अ मल्टीप्लेट एंड द लास्ट वन इज अ ट्रिपलेट अगेन सो नेम ऑल द स्प्लिटिंग पैटर्न्स ठीक है वी जस्ट डिड दैट अब अगला पार्ट के I think that's the I mean, that's the that's the same question. Now he's saying that D and E are both uh, esters with the molecular formula C five H ten O two. The proton and mass spectra are shown. So there are two esters with the formula C five H ten O two. And what's the question? The question is, deduce the structures of the two esters D and E and draw the displayed formula. So I think, oh, uh, yeah, H and M are. Now this is H and M are. So we need to identify. Uh, we already have C five H ten O two. Okay, we have all the isomeric esters drawn previously. Was it drawn here with it? Of five isomers of C five H ten O. So we just need to identify whose H and M R did they did they show show in the in the in the diagram over here? So okay, it's two triplets and two. So two triplets and two quadruplets, right? Uh, I said this is pretty easy to identify. It's uh, the height tells you the number of hydrogen. So the height tells you that this must be CH three. This must be CH three as well. This must be. Us ne two likha hai that must be CH two. This one must be CH two as well. So you got you got two CH threes and you got two CH twos. So which molecule has that? So I think it's uh, it's this one. ये जो नंबर टू था ना यू गॉट टू सी एस सीज 
and you got two, you got two CH2s as well. A splitting pattern will be yoga. Splitting pattern yoga, it's going to be a triplet. This one is going to be a quadruplet. This one is going to be a triplet, and this one is going to be a quadruplet. So, uh, so definitely it's this one. So, so D ka draw karo. So, so D is is this one. You clearly have spent a detail much. I think you don't. You you had. I mean, you should not have gone into any detail about this one because the height just gave it away. Okay, this the molecule had two CHTs and it had two CH2s. Is this clear? Sir, every formula has this like two CH3 and two CH2. Like, how did we identify? No, they wrote they wrote that the height was three, right? So what did we learn? Okay, what did the height tell you? It told you the number of hydrogen protons. So that means there were three hydrogens resonating at this at this chemical shift. The only way you have three hydrogens resonating at a particular chemical shift is that it, it is most likely going to be a CH three. Is that clear? Yes. As I say, well, I know this one. Six protons are resonating, so the height is six. So how can six protons resonate in the same environment? Benzene. Nini six. The methyl groups. Ham. 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 The formula. Yeah, it's not benzene. Okay, so benzene is out of the question. Although benzene could be okay, could have been okay. the case. So that means you got two CSTs, right? In exactly the. Same environment. So that's why six hydrogen protons are resonating together. So. Yeah, you had two molecules which had, uh, I mean, you, had, you, you either had this one, both CHTs were in the same environment, or you had this one, both CHTs were in the same environment. Okay, so, so it's either one of these two. Then you have uh, a CH, just one hydrogen, so that must be a CH. And then you have another CH3. So pattern care, you need, there are actually a total of uh, three CH3s, two in the same environment, one in a different environment, and then there's a CH as well. So if I go back and have a look uh, over here, both of them, I think, fit the description. Uh, both of them fit the description because, because you got two CSTs in the same environment, you got a CST in a different environment, and you got a CH. This one has the same thing. Two CSTs in the same environment, one CH and one CST singlet, which is in a different environment. So, so we can't really identify which one is which. The only difference is, is this thing, that the ester is linked differently. The CHTs are attached on the right side over here, the CHTs are attached to the to the left side. So so structurally they're different, but it's either one of them. Yeah, the clear, it's either one of them, right? Is that clear? Yes. So how do I identify which one did they give us? Um, now I know that this is a singlet, right? This CST is next to what? It's next to an oxen. So I'll, I'll have a look at the table. When you have CST, which is next to an oxygen, that's 3.22, 3.2 to 4. So in our case, it was a singlet. So this exactly matches that range, 3.22. That means the CST is right next to an oxygen. Is that clear that the singlet that you have is right next to an, to a single oxygen? Because if it, yes. there, were, there were two options, it could have been right next to a C double bond O as well. Then it would have been 2.223, which wasn't in our case, right? We didn't have that. So, so in our case, uh, This was not a CHT that, that was next to a double bond O because then the chemical shift value was 2.32. See, which is not, not the case over here. So I'll go back to the structures that I have. So the CST has to be next to an oxygen. The CST should not be next to a serial bond O. So it's this structure over here, this one over here, not this one. Is this clear? Ye part clear?
clear it. So let's collect the thing. This is the molecule. So, so it was two CH3s and H, C double bond O and O, and the CH3 over here. So this is your singlet. Uh, these two were resonating together. So that's your doublet because the neighboring carbon atom has one H. And then you had a, a multiplet over here. They had already drawn the isomers, so you just had to figure out which one was the right one. I say in this case, you had to actually look up at the table and figure this out. Now, the spectrum of D involves a quartet at 4.1. Identify the protons responsible for this quartet, quartet on your structure by labeling these protons with letter F. Explain why this peak is split into a quartet. So, so D is a quartet. D is the first one, I think. So label it with, I think, F. So quartet cons are these CH2s, right? These were your quartets. Why was it a quartet? Because the neighboring carbon had uh, three H's. ठीक है क्लियर है ये यस सर अच्छा स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ ई हैज अ डबलेट एट 1.1 आइडेंटिफाई द प्रोटॉन्स रिस्पांसिबल फॉर दिस डबलेट ऑन योर स्ट्रक्चर बाय लेबलिंग इट विद लेटर जी सो डबलेट इट लेटर जी एक्सप्लेन व्हाई दिस हैज अ केमिकल शिफ्ट एट 1.1 सो डबलेट सेकंड वाले में आई मीन दिस वन which one is a doublet? I mean, this is a doublet. He said that label it with a, with a G, with the letter G. Why is it a doublet? Because the neighbor has... Uh, one proton. So the neighboring carbon atom has one proton, so that's a doublet. He, had, he was asking for the fact that... Uh, okay, why is it at 1.1? That was the... Why was it at 1.1? .1? You're going to quote the table. That it's got this environment. The environment of the proton is an alkane type environment uh, and it resonates at 0 0.92, 0 0.9 to 1.7. So next one. So question, like when answering this question, it should be assumed that together all the hydrogen atoms in a benzene ring result in a single unsplit peak. So now he's specifically saying that the benzene is a single, assume that the benzene is a, is a single unsplit peak at delta 7.2. So we're going to go with that. The structures of five iso isomeric ketones, PQRS and T are given. Identify all the carbon atoms on the structures above. Label each chiral carbon atom with an, with a star. So... As a for, I mean, I'm going to draw all these structures. Uh, the first one. As so we have benzene, then you've got a ketone. Then you have CH and two CH3s. As so does this have a, have a chiral center? No. As so a next one, see, so that's another benzene. And you've got a ketone, cetyl bond O. And then you've got CH2, CH2, CH3. So CH2. That's so any chiral sent over here. No. That's an R for R. R is uh, C6H5 again. So that's benzene. And then there's CH2. Then you have a ketone. And after that, there's CH2, CH3. No. 
तो फिर एस इज बेंजीन सी एच टू सी एच टू देन कीटोन सीरियल बॉन्ड ओ एंड देन यू हैव अ सी एच थ्री इसमें भी नहीं है ऐसे प्रॉब्लम टी में ही होगा ठीक है टी के अंदर इट्स बेंजीन एंड यू हैव सी एच यू कॉल्ड अ सी एच थ्री ब्रांच फिर यू कॉल्ड अ कीटोन सीरियल बॉन्ड ओ And then you've got another CST. That one is um, chiral. The first one with benzene ring. ठीक है ये chiral. ये वो कह रहा है identify all the chiral carbon. We did that proton in a spectrum of one of the five isomers P Q R S N T is shown. तो वो कहेगा कि पहले उसे कह identify which one of this compound. So so whose N M R spectrum is this one? Triplet. quadruplet and two singlets and you've got a total of four environments is first pack the environment how many environments do you have in the first one p forget the splitting the environments how many environments do you have two that's one that's mm-hmm. your second That's your second one. Third one, benzene. Benzene H is right. So that's your third one. So that's definitely not it. Okay. So it's got it's got uh, three environments. What about the what about Q? Q has uh, that's one four. environment. Okay. It's got four. Okay. So that's a candidate for this one. And then you have this benzene. So benzene is a singlet. He told us in the question that benzene is a singlet. What will happen? What is this one? Triplet. Triplet. This is going to be a multiplet, and this is going to be a triplet again, right? So that's not over here. We don't have a multiplet over here. Okay, so ये गलत हो गया. ठीक है. Is this is this clear? Yes. अच्छा अगले वाले में that's uh, again four in my mind side. That's four. ये होगा शायद ऐसे four है. So what do you have? You've got. Uh, I mean, this one is a triplet. ठीक होगा दैट्स अ दैट्स अ क्वाड्रुप्लेट राइट अ ये क्या होगा सी एस टू दैट्स गोइंग टू बी बोथ ऑफ देम विल बी सिंगलेट्स सर व्हाई वाज इट क्वाड्रुप्लेट बिकॉज़ इसके साथ थ्री एच है ओके ओके इससे कोई नहीं है ठीक है देस नथिंग So that's a singlet, and this one is also a singlet. Okay, so do you exactly match? Kara, this one. Um, so most likely it's going to be this one. But you should double check. Kara, okay, if any other one has the same pattern, then we would have to look at the table as well. So, iska bata do. How many environments do you have? You've got uh, four again. This one. Okay, two and three. Ah, uh, here you've got. a singlet uh the benzene is singlet because they told us that it's a singlet yahan pe open a benzene ring results in a single unsplit peak to wo usne he just told us in the question theek hai usually benzene is not a singlet normally it's not a singlet acha kya this one this is going to be a singlet uh this one is going to be a triplet a triplet and a singlet again So you're not getting any quadruplets over here in this one. So this one has no quadruplet. फिर ये वाला आखिरी के this H, this CH3, and this CH3, four environments. So singlet, singlet. This is going to be a doublet because neighboring carbon has one H, so you don't have a doublet. ठीक है. So we be so basically it's this one. This structure refers to this structure over here. 
Okay. Secret so, cleaner. Yes. For structure T, how is the the benzene a singlet? Oh, it's a weak question. It was because you told us in the question. It's the like question with the carbon. No, but like beside the carbon, it has like four hydrogens. Beside which carbon it has four hydrogens? Like the the benzene, like for T, for the isomer T. This one, right? Yeah. Achha, so you're saying who's a singlet? Why is benzene a singlet? Yeah, because the carbon beside it has four hydrogens. No, that's not the carbon beside it. It's for zoom in, karke dekho na. It's a. Uh... It's actually like this. It's uh, this is your benzene. These are your benzene H's. So ben there's a carbon in the middle that doesn't even that that doesn't have H. That's your neighboring carbon atom. But the benzene wale jo H hai na, their neighboring carbon atom is this one, and it doesn't have any H. Is that clear? Yes. The that's the neighbor of the neighbor, okay? So that's further away. Okay. So next one. So draw the displayed formula of the compound you have identified. Uh, identify the protons responsible for um each environment i said so the only difference is he already told us 7.2 that's your that's your benzene also he told us in the question right so this ch2 over here this singlet over here must be this one that's uh i think 3.7 this ch2 the quadruplet must be the two point uh whatever that is five And the triplet is going to be at one or one point one. Uh, name the splitting pattern of the peak at three point seven. Explain why it has the splitting pattern to three point one. We don't have three point three point seven. Sorry. So the splitting pattern is a singlet. Okay, that's written. Why? Because the neighboring carbon atom has no H, no protons. As I choose from the letters P, Q, R, S, and T to identify the two compounds that each have a doublet peak in the proton NMR spectrum. So in Salome, who's got a doublet peak? Neighboring carbon atom has one H. So this one is definitely a, this one is a doublet. Who else has a doublet? Uh, D. 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 Yeah. So that's a doublet. Neighboring carbon atom has one H. Uh, singlet. No doublets over here. No doublets over here. So P and P and D. Okay, this one will be P and D. The compound with only three peaks in its cinema spectrum, that's the first one, I think. The first one had just three peaks, so that's that's P. That's P. Suggest a suitable solvent that we use for obtaining the spectrum shown in figure eight point. What's figure eight point one? I said what solvent is used uh, in each NMR? What is the solvent? D2O. No, D2O is not the solvent. D2O is added later to remove the OH peaks, not D2O. It's CD deuterated solvents. So CDCL3 is used. And then the proton NMR spectrum of T is. Comp now he's adding D2O. Okay, D2O is not the solvent itself. D2O is something that's added into the solvent. Uh, describe any difference in the two spectra. So if you add D2O in T, uh, which one is T? T is this one. Will anything change? No. Okay, there is no OH and there's no, nothing should change. So 
so no difference. Um, no OH or NH2 protons or amines. Complete a table to give, to, to give the number of peaks of carbon-13 NMR, so carbon-13, first one. How many different carbon-13 environments do you have? Do you get that's one? These two are exactly the same. These two are the same, and then you have... Uh, this, and then you have the last two. So how many environments do we have? I think that's one, six. two, three, four, five, six, because you got, you got six environments. Sir, what? if this was for each NMR, how many peaks would you get? If it benzene, they would all be one. A multiplet, part one, TK. Unless they tell you that it's a singlet. Then you have a CH2 over here, and then you've got a CH3 over here. So there'll be three proton environments, TK. Okay. I say, how many uh, carbon 13? So that's, this one is unique, right? Then you have, these two are identical carbons. Then you have, these two are identical carbons as well. Uh, then you have this carbon over here that's uh, different. And you've got these carbons over here, they're exactly the same. The five, that's five, one, two, three, four, five, five environments. Peragla part. Um, these two are exactly the same, right? Four. So they said they have four, like any four. Um, these two are exactly the same. Uh, these are exactly the same. You're getting four. So these, so they have four environments. It's how many environments do you have in this case? I mean, this these two are same. Uh, these two are the same. How about the environments four or not four? Five. Not five. Six. Need come it's, it's it's I mean these Three. these middle ones are exactly the same. All of them are exactly the same. I mean they're they're exactly they're exactly the same environment, all four of them. Do you look at it carefully? They're all they're all the same. I mean, if you look at if you if you're standing on this carbon atom, you've got us you've got these two next to you, right? If you're standing on this carbon atom, you still have these two next to you, and you've got this orange one. It's if you're standing on this carbon atom, you still have these two next to you. You've got this orange one. So so basically, if you stand on any of these four carbon atoms, the environment would be exactly the same. The chemical environment, bonding, etc., would be exactly the same. Is this clear? So all these four are exactly the same. So there's there's actually just three environments. You clear the part? Yes. So then, um, so you call it like So sometimes it would be given, uh, I mean, the question will appear with uh, with an organic question. So for example, if you have this question, C8H8O2, he says that the carbon-13 enema contains uh, six peaks. Uh, the first thing is by looking at the formula C8H8, whenever you have a 1-1 one -one ratio of carbon to hydrogen, that would indicate that it has a benzene. So A over here has a, it definitely has a benzene. And it's got it's got two other carbon atoms as well, and it's got oxygens as well. Now he says compound A reacts with excess bromine to give a bromine water to give compound B. So 
what kind of compound will this have? Will will this one be? Who reacts with bromine water? Like what type of benzene will this be? Two four six bromine. Think, and this one would probably be a phenol, right? So because phenols react with bromine water, and uh, what else can you have? You've got uh, you've got one extra carbon atom. No, two extra carbon atoms. Uh, so then he says that. This compound A, it reacts with uh, iodine to form a yellow precipitate. So who reacts with iodine? That's uh, that's something that has a methyl group, which is next to serial bond O, or it's something that's got a methyl group, which is next to CH and OH. So if we, we either have one of these two things. So, Maybe it's a maybe it's a methyl with a, with CST. Do I have the right number of H's if I if I attach a methyl with cetyl bond O? How many H's do we have? I've got one, two, three, four, and five and three eight. Okay, so everything adds up. I'm going to have eight hydrogens. So it's probably this thing. It's it's not going to be this one because the H's will not be will not add up to be equal to eight. If I if I add this structure, so you're getting a positive hydrophone test. Now the other thing is, um, what do we got phenol? Oh, huh? OH attached to to this benzene. Yeah, bromine water. You so which benzene reacts with bromine water? The one that's a phenol, right? Is that clear? Okay. I mean, phenols react with aqueous bromine. Now, the other part is, did I attach it to the right position? Does this carbon have six peaks or six environments? How many, he says that the carbon 13 NMR has six peaks. Are all these six carbon atoms different or the same? Different. Okay, they're all different. Okay, it's an unsymmetric molecule. All the all of them are different. So that's so that's six peaks over here, and there would be two more peaks over here. So I'm I'm getting eight peaks. So that means that basically tells me that I did not attach it to the right position. So that means this thing must be somewhere else. Because I should be getting, I should be getting six peaks. So maybe if I attach it over here, cetyl bond O and CH three. How many environments do I have now? That's one. These two are exactly the same. That's second. These two are exactly the same. That's third. This one is the fourth one, and that's uh, five or six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I have six environments. So. So that means the CH three methyl ketone would be over here. Is this clear? Okay, that's what that's how I'm going to get six peaks. Is this part clear? Yes. Okay, yellow precipitate gets cut off. The CH three breaks off and uh, it turns into a yellow precipitate of CH i three. What's the other thing? The other thing, this carbon turns into a carboxylic acid. So, so what you get is. So what you get is OH, and this carbon atom will turn into a carboxylic acid or a salt of the carboxylic acid, and these are your H atoms. So the next part is that PCl five. What is it? What does PCl five do? It will turn it into an acyl chloride, most likely. The OH will turn into uh, an acyl chloride. Uh, I'm assuming that that he's using this as or considering considering this as a carboxylic acid, because that's PCl five only. I mean, that's the only possible reaction you have with PCl five, because phenols definitely don't react with PCl five. So that would mean that your molecule now, which had an OH. 
it's now an asset, right? Serial bond O and CL. And then what you have is the SL chlorides, they form esters, they, uh, they have vigorous, uh, they can form esters very easily with, with alcohols. So this molecule over here, which had an OH and had four H atoms, and had a serial bond O and CL, and you're reacting it with propane 2 all that means there's a, three carbon atom and there's an OH and there's CS3 as anyways the OH and H in the middle are going to be lost and they would form an ester link right in the middle So that's going to be your propane to all connecting with your asset thread. Uh, so that's this one. Well, you spare, I think you just uh, wanted to draw the organic product, I guess. I mean, you can write, uh, yeah, it's asking to draw the organic compound, not the byproduct. E is this thing. Bromination will happen. Phenols are highly reactive. So this thing, C double bond O and your methyl and you have your OH. And bromines will get added to position numbers two and two and six. So bromines, when they've gotten added over here. So, anyways, like in this part, uh, the role that carbon thirteen NMR uh, played in this one was that you were able to figure out where the methyl ketone is going to be attached. Okay, it's going to be attached to this position, not to any other position, because then you're going to get a different number of peaks for the carbon 13 TK. Is this question clear? Yes, sir. Uh, compound Y is C5H10O2 reacts with Na2CO3 to evolve uh, bubbles of gas, uh, the proton NMR. So C5H10O2. And it's reacting with Na2CO3 to evolve bubbles of gas. So what type of uh, chemical compound is this? Well, the sodium carbonate is who reacts with sodium carbonate? Acidic? It's a, it's a carboxylic acid basically. So it's definitely Cesar bond O, OH. So it's, it's definitely Cetyl bond O in which, uh, and he, he's doing it in D2O. So that means the OH peak is missing. You, you're not actually going to see the OH peak. So from the spectrum, the singlet peak is gone. Why? Because he's doing everything in, in heavy water in D2O. I say anyway, so you're left with how many carbons? You're left with four carbons. Uh, so how can you arrange the four carbon atoms? You need a multiplet. So four carbon atoms, right? So yeah, also said, uh, I've got a doublet. That means uh, that means the neighbor has or the neighbor has one H. So the neighbor must be CH. I've got another doublet. So that again means the neighbor is, is CH. And then I've got a multiplet. That kind of indicates that the neighbor has many H's. So most likely 
there's a neighbor that is a ch and so it must be a ch somewhere in the middle and there will be two methyl groups do you get that's my that's my five carbon atoms so that's how I, I'm going to get, I mean, you, you can do some trial and error, but you'll probably end up with this one. You can draw a couple of isomers. So that's your doublet. This one is going to be a doublet as well. So you're going to get two doublets. And the middle one is going to be a multiplet. So you could have, what you, you could have drawn is you could have drawn a couple of molecules and then you could have figured out which one is which? Up here, well, you have to figure out uh, the splitting pattern, which is already given over here. We, we did that doublet, triplet. The environment of the protons, we listed it already. The multiplet is at, I think, 1.9. 1. Uh, this one, uh, the smaller doublet is at 2.2, I think. And this one is at 0.9. You can you can fill the table accordingly and you can fill the number of each protons responsible six over here, one over here, and um, so I can fill this up 0.95. That's uh that's six protons. 1.9, that's uh one H. 2.2 is two H's. 2.2 is a doublet. One H is a multiplet. And the last one, that's a, a doublet again. Okay, environment of proton, just write this stuff. That's a methyl with a with a CS next door. Like the 0.951 is, is two methyls with a CS next door. Uh, the 1.91 is, a methyl with on one side there's a CH2 and on the other side you got a you got two methyl groups. So you can sort of underline kids, these are the protons we're talking about. And the last one is a CH2 that's next to a carboxylic acid. We're almost done with half the worksheet. I'll, I'll send the solve one TK in the group for this one. So, okay, next time, pick new TK. Okay, sir. Okay, love this.